We now come to one of my favorite theorems of geometric measure theory, the Falconer sundial. So a cute consequence of the theorem is that there exists a subset of R3 such that at almost all times of day, the shadow of the set gives the time of day in digital, at least up to a set of Lebesgue measure zero. So this picture is from the original paper by Falconer, and you know this may seem like sort of a silly example. However, some people inspired by this paper actually went out and tried to construct uh, digital sundials. So for example, here's a picture of one that's in a park in Genk, Belgium, um, that gives the time of day that's accurate up to um, only every five minutes. And you can actually go on the web and find sort of tabletop digital sundials as well if you want to buy something cool for your home. Now, the actual theorem of Falconer is a little bit more technical to state. So if you're watching this as a standalone video, I highly recommend that you watch some of the previous videos talking about the Grassmannian and about Venetian blinds if you want to get the most out of this. Okay, so first of all, recall the Grassmannian bundle, U and M. So recall that's a set of pairs of M-dimensional planes and the points contained in those planes. So there's a natural measure that we can define on the Grassmannian. So given the set A, the measure of A is defined to be the integral over all M-dimensional planes V in my Grassmannian. Uh, so the Lebesgue measure of the set of points x so that vx is in my set A. So now we're going to find a projection operator, capital pi. So capital pi of a set E is essentially the orthogonal projection of the set E onto every m-dimensional plane simultaneously. So it's a subset of the Grassmannian bundle that you get when you do that. More specifically, so it's a set of all possible pairs of a plane with a projection of a point into that plane as I vary over all planes in my Grassmannian and all points inside my set E. So now Falconer's uh, theorem can be stated as follows. So for any measurable set A in my Grassmannian bundle, I can find the set E whose projection contains A in such that the measure of the difference between the projection and A is equal to zero. So what does this have to do with you know, sundials and shadows? So Let's say, um, let's say I define a set A by specifying its slices on planes. So I'm going to let A sub V be the set of X's in V such that the pair VX is inside my set A. All right, so imagine that I was able to specify all the sets A, V uh, so that the resulting set A was measurable with respect to the measure M. Then the following theorem says that outside of a Grassmannian measure zero set of planes, so I can find a set E, so outside that measure zero set of planes, the projection into V of E will contain my chosen slice or my chosen set. And the difference between the projection of E and this set will have Lebesgue measure zero. Now, the full result of Falconer's theorem is a bit difficult to prove. However, what we'll show is just the planar case. So we're going to work in R2 and we're going to consider projections into lines. And the full proof is actually very similar to this case. So for shorthand, we're going to write G for the Grassmannian, U for the Grassmannian bundle, and gamma for the Grassmannian measure. So recall the lemma from the previous vi uh, video about Venetian blinds. So it says that for any interval parallel to the x-axis and any number, a small number alpha, we can, and for positive numbers epsilon, rho, and delta, okay, we can find a set E that is a union of balls contained in a very small rectangle around I, so, of, so small as in it's of height rho, which we can make as small as we want, so that the projection of E in direction theta contains the projection of I uh, if theta is very close to the angle pi over 2, so alpha close. And then for angles far away from pi over 2, so at least alpha plus some small number delta, the projections have small Lebesgue measure. And then there's this intermediate range between alpha and alpha plus delta, which we don't know what happens, but it's okay because that's a very tiny range. So the main lemma that we'll need to prove Falconer's theorem is the following. So suppose we have an open set O, and we have a point V naught Z naught inside the projection of this open set. Then we can find a base of closed neighborhoods around this point, so that for any 
set inside this base. And for any epsilon, we can find a set E, that's a union of balls, contained in our open set, whose projection contains the base element N, and the difference in measure is less than epsilon. Okay, so recall that a base is usually a, a base at a point is usually a collection of open sets containing a point so that any open set contains an element of this base. So when I say a base of closed neighborhoods, really what I mean is that I'm looking at the closures of sets, uh, open sets in a base at a point. So this is just for technical reasons. Um, so what's the idea behind this lemma? Well, if I have a base at every point in my space and I look at the union of all these bases, then I can generate the original topology using these base elements. That is to say, I can write any open set as a union of these base elements. Now, this lemma says that I can approximate any base element by the projection of some set in Euclidean space. So the idea is going to be that um, if I'm able to approximate every base element and I can write any open set as a union of base elements, that means that I can approximate any open set by um, a projection of a set in Euclidean space. So I'll just sketch some details of the proof. So without less generality, I'll assume that this line V0 is the real line. Let curly I denote the set of intervals inside my open set whose projections contain the pair V0, Z0. So in other words, these are the set of intervals inside my open set so that the orthogonal projection of the open interval, the, the interior of the interval I the projection onto V0 contains the point Z0. So now for each alpha between 0 and pi over 4, and I inside my collection of intervals, I let Ni alpha be the set of pairs Vz, so that the angle that V makes with the real axis is at most alpha, and Z is inside the projection of this interval. So notice that if I didn't have this condition here, this would be exactly the same as just the projection of the interval I into the Grassmannian bundle. So instead of projecting i into all lines v, I'm only projecting into lines v that make angle uh, at most alpha with the real axis. So next what I do is that I define my base of uh, uh, closed sets around the point v naught z naught to be the set of these ni alpha sets where i is in my collection of intervals recall whose in the projection of the interiors of these intervals contain v naught z dot and for alpha between 0 and pi over 4. So it's not too difficult to check that this ends up being a base with respect to the topology on the Grassmannian bundle. Okay so now we need to check that each one of these base elements can be approximated by a projection of a set E in Euclidean space. So I'm going to fix one of these elements and just call it n. Without loss of generality, I'll just assume that i is the interval, so it has length equal to 1. Okay, so now my goal is to find a set E so that it, the projection contains n and the difference in measure is less than, it, I can make as small as I wish. So recall from my Venetian blinds lemma that um, given this interval i, I can, and for any epsilon, delta, and rho positive, I can find a set E contained inside my open set, so that the following holds. So first of all, the projections of E contain the projections of I whenever theta is an angle very close to pi over 2. So in other words, whenever I'm projecting either down onto the real line or very close to straight down. And secondly, the projection in uh, in directions theta that are at least alpha plus delta away from pi over 2, the projections will have very small Lebesgue measure. So why is it that the projection of E contains the set N? Okay, well, to prove this, let's let V, X, B in N. Okay, so our goal is to show that this pair is also in the projection of E. So in order to show that, we need to show that for any v, any pair of vx inside n, the projection of, so I want to show that the projection of v of e contains the point x um, for any such pair of vx inside n. So that will imply this statement.
Okay, so recall that n has this definition down here. So v is inside n if and only if uh, the angle that v makes with the real axis is at most alpha. So this implies angle v makes with x axis is at most alpha and x is inside the projection in to the line v of the interval i now we've been working with projections into lines and also mentioning uh, also talking about projections and directions theta so let's reconcile the two so suppose i have a line v that makes angle at most alpha with the x axis now if i look at the normal vector theta so notice that projecting into the line v is the same thing as projecting along the angle theta. And notice that if v makes angle at most alpha with the x-axis, then this angle theta makes a a angle at most alpha with pi over 2. All right, so thus, this statement implies that so if theta is this angle that, v, that the normal vector of v makes with the... Uh, um, so, uh, yeah, so if theta represents this angle here, then the difference between theta and pi over 2 is at most alpha, and x is in pi theta of this interval. Now recall that by construction of E for any theta in this range, this interval is contained inside the projection of E. And so thus, this implies that x is inside the projection of v of e. And thus, that's what we needed to show in order to show that this point vx was inside the big projection of e. And we've shown that for every pair inside n, and that implies that pi e contains the, the set n. Okay, so now what remains to show is that the difference between pi e and the set n is small. Okay, so uh, the measure of this set, recall, is equal to this. So it's going to be the measure, uh, the individual, the integral over the Grassmannian of the integrals of the portion of my set that is contained in each plane. So in this case, it's going to be the measure of the projection of v and e minus the set of points in v so that v z is inside n okay now i split this up into three different intervals depending on what angle alpha makes with um, the x-axis okay so first of all notice that since the integral if we look at this first integral so for angles at most alpha away from the x-axis okay so that corresponds to this situation and recall that e is a set that is contained so if this is the interval i then e is contained inside a tight neighborhood around i so a row neighborhood which i'll call i row so that's the set of points that are distance no more than row away from the interval i and so because the projection of e contains the interval i and in and E is contained in a very tight row neighborhood around the interval i. That means that when I look at the projections, that means that i rho, the difference between i rho and let's say we give the interval i a different color. The difference between i rho and i when I project is also going to be very small. So in fact, the difference in length is going to be at most. Going to be at most some constant depending on rho. Now for this second integral here, notice that uh, I don't actually care what's happening in this integral because this is an integral for angles between alpha and alpha plus delta. So the total measure of the, the total integral is going to be no more than some constant times delta. And then finally if I look at this last interval, okay, recall that in this direction the projections of E uh, are at most epsilon. So that means that this integral is going to be at most epsilon. And rho, delta, and epsilon are parameters that I can choose to make as small as I wish. So thus what I've shown is that for every base element n, I can find a set E whose big projection contains n, and so that this difference in measure can be made as small as I wish.
sketch the remaining details of Falkner's theorem using the previous lemma. So let A be a subset of the Grassmannian bundle, and let E naught be an open set whose projection contains a set A. So because the measure M is Radon, that implies that we can find a decreasing sequence of open sets containing A, so that the measure of the differences between these sets and the set A dec decreases geometrically. Our goal now is to show that we can find a sequence E sub M, a decreasing sequence of sets, whose projections contain the set A sub M, and the measures of the differences between these two sets is also decreasing geometrically. So because the sets EM, uh, projections of the EM sets are close to AM and AMs are close to A, that will imply that the intersections of these sets will be a set where the difference in measure from A is zero. Okay, so first of all, recall that we had this base of uh, closed sets N. So because they are a base of uh, closed sets, that means that we can write any open set as a union of elements from our base. So the constructions of these sets go geometrically. So suppose that we have constructed a set E sub n minus 1. So by construction, we can actually pick these sets E sub m, uh, these E sets, to be unions of balls. Okay, now by construction, we, uh, so the induction hypothesis says that these sets e sub m minus 1 contain the set a sub m. So let's say a sub, a sub m minus 1. So let's say a m minus 1 is this set. Okay, so in particular, because the sets are nested, a sub m is a subset of this set a sub m minus 1. And in particular, any one of these um, base sets n sub m will be a subset of this open set. So let's say this right here is one of our sets n sub m n. Okay, now what this means is that the projection of e m minus 1, uh, so the, sorry, the set e sub m minus 1 is an open set whose projection thus contains the set n sub m n. So what this means is that by the previous lemma we can find a union of open balls whose projection approximates this set m sub m n. So we'll call that e sub m n. And this will be a union of balls whose projections are contained in the balls um, that make up the previous set e sub m minus 1. So to recap, we can find a set e sub m n contained in the previous set e sub m minus 1 so that the projections contain the base set n sub m n and also the difference in measure is less than 2 to the minus m minus n. Okay, and then finally we let e sub m be the union of all these sets. So by construction this will be contained inside the previous set e m minus 1. And then we define our set e to be the intersection of these open sets. So recall that because we picked each set uh, to be composed of balls whose closures were contained in the balls from the previous set. This is what will help ensure that the set E will be non-empty when we take the uh, intersection of these sets. And so this set E is now the final desired set that satisfies the conditions of Falconer's theorem.